Hello and welcome to part 5 of the Australian Unemployed Workers Union's online advocacy course. This is the final part and it's called Running the Advocacy Service. So this is a real practical guide to how you can get involved with the Unemployed Workers Union and help us run the advocacy service. I'm going to go very briefly through um, what the advocacy service looks like and, and how you can get involved and essentially just map out some of the the basic ways that the Unemployed Workers Union runs its advocacy service. So firstly, I'm going to talk about what you need um, to help us run the advocacy service, what you need to, to have in order to be eligible to run the service. Firstly, you need a computer with the internet. This will help you get access to the intake form, which is the data we collect from each call. It will help you get access to the instructions which are available on that intake form and also it's essential for you to be able to respond to emails that we receive and voicemails that, that we get through from people who aren't able to actually contact us on the day that they leave a voicemail. It's also really important just for general referral advice so you can look up information whilst you're on the phone to refer them on to other organisations or just to look up information that you need to on the spot. So computer with internet is, is essential. But that being said, um, there are people who have run the service without um, the internet right there and then. They, they simply write down um, the main details from the call and they they fill out the form by paper and then later on they go and insert the form on the internet. So the internet is needed at some point but you don't actually need it right there and then while you're running the, uh, the hotline. Then there's a phone. So obviously essential for anyone who wants to run the, the, the advocacy hotline. Um, how it works is the Unemployed Workers Union would simply um, redirect the, the hotline to your personal mobile phone or to a, a separate union phone that the Unemployed Workers Union can actually purchase for you because it's, act, it's um, probably easier for you to have your own union phone rather than have to use your own personal phone and not really be sure whether it's a personal call or a union call. So having your own Unemployed Workers Union phone is a really good move and it's something that the Unemployed Workers Union can help you with. The phone isn't necessary for people who don't want to work on the hotline, who just want to restrict their efforts to email, but the phone is you know, obviously essential for anyone on the, on the hotline. The next thing that you need as an advocacy officer is knowledge of the advocacy code of conduct and your roles and responsibilities as an advocacy officer, and that's something I'm going to get into in this part. Finally, this is another obvious one, People running the advocacy service need to have comprehensive knowledge of the employment services industry, the Unemployed Workers' Rights Guide, our booklet, the Unemployed Workers' Union website, because often when you're talking on the phone, you're guiding people through the website and trying to give them the tools they need to be able to refer to it later and have a good manner with calls on the phone. Advocacy officers have um, a few responsibilities when running the, the hotline and while the, the list here um, you wouldn't necessarily be expected to do all of this this is the, the maximum you can be expected to do as a as an advocacy officer so first there's the most basic requirement which is administer the advocacy service whether that be working the hotline or emailing people or doing callbacks which is calling back people who've left um, messages or a combination of all three. The second responsibility is to liaise with the advocacy rostering coordinator to confirm availability. So we have one of our volunteers will confirm with you what day you can work if you're doing the hotline and then they'll, they'll roster you in and you need to liaise with them if you have any change in your availability. Then there's another obvious one which is the responsibility to provide correct information in accordance with, with this advocacy training. And one important thing to remember is that if you 
if you can't think of the information to give an unemployed worker on the spot, um, if you're working in the hotline, then simply tell them you call them back or you send them an email. So you don't need to give them all the information on the spot. You can give it to them at a later date. So you shouldn't feel under any pressure to provide that information on the spot. And it, the most important thing is to make sure that information is correct. Next um, is uh, the responsibility to liaise with the advocacy support coordinator if unsure of your role or advice or you just want to talk about, about your shift. And that's another volunteer who will be happy to talk to you about what's going on with, with, your, with your advocacy hotline shift or you need any assistance in, in um, administering your, you, you know, the advocacy services. Another responsibility, um, and this is more of a, sort of a voluntary one, is to recruit new unemployed workers union members and hopefully advocacy officers. And then reporting back to the coordinator, that's essentially talking to the advocacy support coordinator regarding activities. There may be meetings set up in order to understand where everyone's going. And that's, that speaks to the, the final one as well about attending meetings and participating in correspondence. Next we have the Advocacy Code of Conduct Ethical Guidelines. So th this is very important for you to understand um, the ethics of the Unemployed Workers Union, sort of where we're coming from in terms of providing this, this service. And firstly, it's imperative that while on the phone and on the email, you, you don't present as a, as a legal service. The Unemployed Workers Union is not a, a legal body and we're not able to give legal advice. So we must not represent as, legal, as a legal service. We're, we're essentially an advice line that helps people um, with sort of understanding the, the guides and the deeds. So always refer to the guides and the deeds and always um, begin the call or at some point during the call remind the caller that we are not a legal service. Secondly, the ethical guideline to respect the AUWU demands um, which are available online and our guiding principles which are also available online. So I encourage you to look at those. Um, work within personal limits and set boundaries. This is another important one. We, we, the last thing we want is phone code workers to volunteer for our advocacy service and work themselves too hard because it can be quite difficult at times when you're dealing with vulnerable, stressed out, unemployed workers in calling the hotline. When you take a break, you should take a break. Also, our ethical guidelines and states we want to promote human dignity and fair treatment and treat all calls with dignity and respect. Also, promote individual privacy. And this is an important one because people are often um, unsure whether they want to give their um, name and contact details on the phone. They're understandably worried that it might be passed on to a third party. So we need to ensure that we inform these unemployed workers that their personal details will be kept completely securely on our, on our server. And then the next one is to not engage in contact conduct that might damage the reputation of the union and service it provides. Um, next is to never encourage members to break social security law or bring system of disrepute. And finally, do not operate service under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Now we go into some practical guidelines here. Well, this is um, a lot of, a lot of uh, crossover with the ethical guidelines, but it's important that we and recognise that distinction. So the AEW seeks to provide advice, support and guidance through provision of an advocacy service for unemployed and underemployed persons who have difficulties with job agencies within an ethical fr framework, including respect for diverse community non-discrimination against any person and respect for their privacy. So the first practical guideline is to ensure that we provide one-on-one -on -one non-legal advice that provides information, support and referral as needed a non-judgmental competential setting which empowers and encourages self-advocacy. And that includes confidentiality, so the, the caller information goes into a password protected database and 
no call or information goes to a third party. Listen with respect and communicate clearly. Make appropriate referral and follow-up and to work with members to ensure they are aware of their rights and assist them in asserting those rights. Second practical guideline is to ensure that officers keep accurate records of calls in order to provide appropriate and consistent advice and work towards change in unfair legislation policy and practices on a national level. And finally, the practical guide, final practical guideline is to take care of AUW hotline volunteers to create a safe, productive and enjoyable work, workspace. Volunteers are encouraged to work within their capacity and have the right to terminate any call at any time they are feeling uncomfortable with that call. And the AU advocacy officer and rostering officer will offer assistance to officers when needed. So we must really be careful when when on the unemployed workers unions advice line because we're really putting forward the unemployed workers unions position on a lot of matters and it reflects on the whole union. So it's really important that um, you represent the union at all times. You're not representing yourself. If you want to pursue a personal relationship with the person on the call, then that's something you should do on, on your own time. And this is probably stating the obvious, but it's, it's quite important that officers on the phones and on the email maintain a professional attitude towards the work. And it's, I think, quite possible that people looking to discredit the union will be calling us up and trying to catch us out. So it's really important that we really that we stick to those ethical and practical guidelines at all times. And a good little way to approach it is just to assume your calls are being recorded and that what you say can be used against you and the union at a later date. So now we go into the structure of the union, just to give you an idea of how, how the union is structured. So as you can see, there's the... Um, advocacy working group over there and that's a, that's a separate working group that operates along a number of other working groups including the national branch working group where we have branch coordinators in each state working together to try to solidify our national structure and we have the national communications working group which is trying to essentially get the word of the union out there more and there's the admin working group which is a developing working group that deals with um, correspondence and dealing with the, the back end of the, of the financial situation. And then finally there's the uh, National Research Working Group, which is looking through all the deeds and guidelines and updates that, that are always seem to be happening um, to, to the employment services system and ensuring that those updates are reflected in, in our guides and materials. So just a, a few tips on, on collecting data because the, the data collection component of our service is really, really important. And we need to make sure that we're respectful of people's privacy. And if they do have privacy concerns, then to really um, ensure that they know that their, their data is safe. A good way of doing this is to wait until the end of the call before you collect the data that you need in order to fill out the form and not to ask too many questions as well because there are, in order to, to collect the data we need, we only really need to put down the reason of their call. Their name and email address aren't essential. The most important thing is just the reason that, that they called and what a summary of their issue and that that information is available in the intake form and if you are interested in in um, helping us with with a hotline then we can walk you through that um, that intake form and another another really good way to to convince unemployed workers to call the hotline that, that um, their data is is really necessary is because we're using that to lobby government, essentially, and it's an essential part of, of our mission to fight this system and get a better one. So next, um, just talk a little bit about the voicemails and the emails. Um, if people can't get through 
to the hotline proper, then they'll be directed to the, the voicemail and they will leave a message and that message will get automatically emailed to the Unemployed Workers Union's advocacy account and people who want to make those callbacks can simply log into that email, listen to the message and call them back. So that, that's a really good way to actually sort of start off helping us with the advocacy because you don't have to really be put on the spot, you can do the research before you call and you just listen to the message, do the research, call them back and give them that help that they need and also fill out the, uh, the intake form. And finally, just give a bit of information about the advocacy email. So the way we manage the email is we have one centralised email account where all um, concerns and um, questions around people's rights and the ad ad advocacy concerns are all sent into one centralised account and then you simply log into that account and send mail from an unemployedworkersunion.com email address which um, we can we can assign to you and it's it's that easy we just give you the login and then you can start looking at emails and research them as, as you want and, and respond as you want and once you once you respond to it then you drag it over you drag the email over into your your file so that basically sums it up how to help us run our advocacy service i hope it's been been, been useful to you and it has been a little bit vague in certain areas but we have to condense it down so it um, doesn't go for too long and it's meant as an introduction so hopefully this will pique your interest and you'd want to get involved in this struggle in helping unemployed workers deal with this punitive system because I think there's no question about how punitive this, this system is what we need to do now is fight back against it so there are many ways you can get involved in the union and as I've been discussing in this section, there are lots of ways you can help us run the advocacy service, but there are also other, wa other ways you can come in and help if you'd prefer. For example, there's the communication group and there's the branch coordination group and the admin group. And we're looking for people to come in and, and, and volunteer their time to, to help us build the union and present the union to more people because that's the really big um, issue with the union at the moment is that most unemployed workers don't really know about us so the more people we get on board doing this work building the structure of the union um, getting our name out there the the more unemployed workers we can help empower and hopefully that will lead to us fighting back and offering more effective resistance to the unemployed work to, to, to the government's ongoing attacks against unemployed workers because for a long time successive federal governments have been attacking unemployed workers and there hasn't been the sort of resistance we need to push back against those attacks. So that's really what the Unemployed Workers Union is all about, is resisting ongoing government attacks against unemployed workers and helping unemployed workers on the ground deal with these punitive um, policies is, is the way we're going to go about building the movement. So it would be really great if you could come in to help us with this advocacy service. That's where most of our work is done. And to do that, simply give us an email at advocacy at unemployedworkersunion.com and we'll try and work with you to get you on board our service. So thanks very much for taking this online course and hopefully um, you can join us soon after, after completing the quiz and you can join this struggle.